And so we all have our issues. And so the way we dress, fitted caps, cut off jeans, our piercings, earrings, tattoos, who we friends with, that can all lead us to be isolated. We think that it's causing us to be fit in, but really we're just isolating ourselves because now if you don't have the latest of the latest, you feel like you're not a part anyway. And so all of those things that you're focusing on to try to fit in, it's really just making you be a castaway to your own issue. Because you're no longer focusing on your issue, you're focusing on pleasing people that got the same issues that you have, so you just have to change your focus. So how do I get to the place that boldness, that confidence, that says against all odds mentality? It's in the moment of desperation that you will believe that among a crowd of hundreds of thousands that you will reach God. This moment of despair to others can be the turning point of redemption you've been seeking. Many may say that I believe that this woman didn't choose God. She was just so desperate and had no other choice. And he was her last hope. So I talked about this with a friend and she said, if she chose to leave, she would have chosen way before 12 years to go and find Jesus. Well, of course, you know, that stored up some, um, some confusion and a big debate. We debate about church all the time. And so my perception is there's always a choice. Even in a moment of despair, you choose. The Bible said that she tried everything and had spent all that she had and that she heard of Jesus. Right then, she had a choice. I could go on or go home. Right then, there was a choice. So she made a decision to go in the place where she was unwanted. She took a risk of ridicule and being stoned just to fight through the crowd and believe that he was the answer to her ongoing issues. You have to understand that this lady here had one of the little knows and messy people found out that she was out, they had the right to stone her to death. But she didn't worry about the facts. Her focus was on, I don't care about being ridiculed, I don't have what I have to go through if I can just get to Jesus. The reason that causes one to choose may vary, but not everyone in a desperate situation chooses God. So even in a moment of despair, you would like to be among some theologians that say he was her last resort. No, even in despair, you have a choice. Some people choose liquor over God. That's their choice. I'm, I'm desperate, I'm tired, I'm frustrated, I'm a drink. So you do have a choice. Yeah, you, you think you have no other choice, but you have a choice. There's another option. There's a better way to do it. You just have to choose. Are you willing to fight through the crowd to get to better? Or do you want to stay in your issue? That's your choice. Fight through the crowd to get to better. Because no, it's not going to be easy to get to better. It's not going to be easy to get to better. It's not going to be easy to get to better. It's not. They have roadblocks, they have obstacles set up to trip you up so that you can quit. It's not going to be easy to get the better. But it is going to be worth it. You're going to go through some stuff I'm talking about. Don't be shocked and confused and trying to figure out, well, no, no, I went through. Remember, Pastor D. warned you. You're going to go through some stuff. The devil going to trip you up. He gonna mess with your friends. He gonna mess with your family. He gonna mess with your car. He'll even mess with the iron just to get you all focused. I'm gonna start spitting out brown stuff and you already confused and make for work. He gonna mess you up. The cat gonna come. This they have this cat. My neighbors feed the stray cats. I don't like cats. I never did like cats. But my neighbors decide that we gonna feed the stray cats. We gonna leave a little bone outside and they move. And so one day it's this black cat and he all black, no white feet, nothing. His eyes black, he black, everything black. I'm walking up the stairs to my apartment and I know now to look for the cat, but he's, you know, cats are sneaky, they're clever. So I'm looking around and I'm saying, I say, good, it's clear to go inside. And I walk up the stairs, get to the top of the steps, and what you think he did? Fruit right past me, scared me half to death. I dropped everything I had. <laughs> I watched too much CSI and criminal minds. So I, I, yeah, I'm thinking so. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm all messed up. And it's this cat, and he just stands there, and it's something as simple as that can mess you up. The devil trying to throw you off with the simple things. Now I had already had a bad day because 
They tried to mess, mess with me at work. I already had a bad day. And if the kids wasn't being right, they was all being bad. And so I just finally get to get home. And then here come the cat. <laughs> so some things are going to happen that's going to try to trip you up. It's not going to be easy to get to better, but it's going to be worth it. Could you imagine after bleeding for 12 years, women, for 12 years, you know you would have fought through anybody and anything to get to your better. And if your, if your name is anything like mine, baby, I would have jumped across the Atlantic Ocean if they said healing was in the next spot. But you have to be like that with your life. When are you going to do whatever it takes to get to better? And so the, the bonus that says you have to forget the mistakes of my past that can hinder my now. There is nothing that you can do about what happened before. You can't go back and change it, but God can erase it. Yeah. He can make all things new. And so there's nothing, thinking about it and remembering what happened, you can remember it for a testimony, but there's no sense in you lay it up in your house and it's, you know, and you just focus it on that. What, what good would they do? There are some things that we have already been through that the devil will use to keep us back instead of allowing us to progress. Romans 3 23 says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What that simply means is that every human being has said, thought, or done something that displeased God or broke his rules. So don't allow who you were to cause you not to grow into who you can become. Don't allow who you were to cause you to grow into who you can become. For everything, there is a process. There is a process. We want things to happen real quick. Lord, I prayed about it. I did wrong. Prayed about it. Fix it, Jesus. And then we just sit up and wait for him to fix it. We don't think we're going to go through anything. We don't think we're going to have to face anything. I prayed to Jesus. I went to church Sunday. It's Tuesday and I'm still in my mess. What did you do? This lady didn't even know that she had the power to call on Jesus. But she had the faith to go to where he was. And see, you have the power is in your mouth. But you also got to put some action with it. You want to know how I know you know that? Let somebody tell you they love you. What you say? Action speak louder than words. <laughs> right? You, I don't believe it until you show me. But then when it comes to us and this walk with Christ, we want to just, the power is in my tongue. And don't want to do nothing. It's power in my tongue. I can speak it. You can. But you have to be strong in your faith as well. That power comes with some work. You want that power, but you ain't prayed in a month. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. There is an opportune time to do things, a right time for everything on earth, a right time for birth and another for death, a right time to plant and another to reap, a right time to kill and another to heal, a right time to destroy and another to construct, a right time to cry and another to laugh, a right time to make love and another to abstain, a right time, you heard that young people? You, did you catch that? A right time to make love and another to abstain. A right time to embrace and another to part. A right time to search and another to count your losses. A right time to reap and another to, to rip out and another to mend. A right time to shut up and another to speak. As right time to love and another to hate. A right time to wage war and another to make peace. There is always the right time, but you have to make sure you're doing the right thing. The time may not be for you to be quiet. It may be a time for you to open your mouth and speak. The time may not be for you to be passive. The time may be for you to be passive aggressive. So you got to know what time you in. So God has a plan and a time. Don't rush the process chasing for perfection. We want to rush the process. I just want to be better, Lord. I just want to be better, Lord. But you don't want to. It's a process. It's some things you have to go through, some serious stuff that you have to face that you need to learn. In life, there is always a time to learn, forever learning. And so you got to take the time, stop focusing on trying to be perfect in the eyes of other people, and look back at your situation for yourself and see, God, what were you trying to show me? 
What did I need to learn? What did I do that was right that I could take with me into the next situation? Stop trying to rush the process, chasing for perfection, and honor the process. Trust the path that God has for you. He knows the beginning and the end of a thing. That's in Isaiah 46 and 10. And he knew you were going to slip up. That's why he had to send himself in human form as a son named Jesus to be crucified on the cross. Jesus was a man who had no sin, only to become sin, so that you could be forgiven. There is nothing you can do about what has happened except learn from it. Allow the past to teach you a lesson so that you can get past your issues and press onward toward the king. Onward. We press it forward, but to who? You got to press onward to what Jesus wants for your life. Don't press onward and try to get past the breakup so you can get to man number five. Yeah. That's why you keep going through the same thing after the same thing. You ain't learned that from one to four. Press on to Jesus and he'll probably lead you to the right one. And he just might be a little bit of a fool, but at least God marked it. And focus on the future and the promises of God. Say focus on the future. We spend a lot of time focused on the day in which we chose to begin our sincere walk with Christ. And we miss the opportunity to be honored for the ability to comprehend the time. You see, it doesn't matter how long it took you to get to Jesus. But there has to be a point that says, Lord, I thank you for even allowing me to find you. We like to focus on all the mistakes that we made, all the, the stuff we smoked and the stuff we drank and who we slept with. We want to focus all on that. And it just took me so long and I just wasted so much of my time. And five years before I found Jesus. You know there's people in this world that never found Jesus? Yeah. They don't even know him, never heard of his name. You better thank him for even being able to find him and stop focusing on that mess. <laughs> 